Jeremiah Smith is going to break numerous records Chris Carter set during Carter's freshman year at Ohio State. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Tuesday edition of Locked On Buckeyes, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day here on Tuesday, September 10th in the year 2024. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by 5 Hour Energy. Go to 5hourenergy.com and use promo code Locked On CFB to receive 20% off your order. We all knew that Jeremiah Smith had a chance to be great. We all believed he probably would be great based off the things people had said about him leading into his first game in the Scarlet and Gray. And then Jeremiah Smith stepped on the field, and we got to see, oh, he is better than advertised. Two touchdowns during his first game, another touchdown in his second game as a Buckeye. And I'm not shying away from the reality that Jeremiah Smith will break numerous records that Chris Carter set during Carter's freshman year at Ohio State. Chris Carter holds the record for most receiving yards as a freshman at Ohio State, most receiving touchdowns as a freshman in the Scarlet and Gray, and also the most receptions. 41 receptions, 8 touchdowns, 684 receiving yards. So far this year, Jeremiah Smith has 11 receptions, 3 touchdowns, 211 receiving yards. The regular season is longer. You also can add in every single catch, touchdown, and receiving yard that Jeremiah Smith gets in the postseason. Even if you didn't have that in effect, if Jeremiah Smith just had the stats during his 12 regular season games, Jeremiah Smith is going to break his records. Over 40 on receptions, over 684 receiving yards, over eight touchdowns. He is that good. It's not every day that you get a guy that's better than advertised. We talk about him all the time. We hype up recruits. We see him. We hear about what they do during spring practice and during winter workouts and during fall camp. But nine times out of ten, they don't play, let alone start during their first game at Ohio State. We have heard Jeremiah Smith is different. But when he's out there on the field, he already has full trust in Will Howard, in Ryan Day, in Chip Kelly. That Jeremiah Smith, if, you, if they're guarding him in one-on-one, he, Smith is already open. Before the snap of the ball, if you see one-on-one coverage on a true freshman in number four on Ohio State right now, he's already open. That's how good he is, and homie just got on campus. He has not finished a regular season. He really hasn't finished much. He hasn't even played four games in the sport. And when he stepped on the field, game number one, there was no hesitation, no questions asked. Nobody was doubting that if you got one-on-one coverage on that dude, he already opened before y'all already called the play. That's how good he is. His maturity is different. Mentally, maturity. His physical maturity is different. But he understands the nuances of the game. And also, he's just been blessed. Like, some guys are literally just blessed with the ability to do things most other humans can't do. Randy Moss. I mean, Brian Smith even said that Jeremiah Smith is the best receiver recruit since Randy Moss. Now, many of you didn't watch Randy Moss in high school because I am one of them. I did not watch Randy Moss in high school. I remember Randy Moss at Marshall. I remember Randy Moss um, also when Randy Moss was uh, in the NFL, the Vikings, things of that nature when he was doing his thing there in the National Football League. Same goes for Chris Carter. I was not even alive during Chris Carter's freshman year at Ohio State, so I had no chance to see what Chris Carter did during his freshman year. I remember Chris Carter from the Vikings and Randy Moss and Dante Culpepper, and they were very hard to stop. Yes, the times have changed. Many of you are looking at these numbers right now when Jeremiah Smith has already had three touchdowns. Chris Carter had eight. Times have changed. It was a different brand of football, but also with a different brand of football, That record has stood for a very long time because most freshmen at any position don't come in and they're ready to play. Most guys aren't like that. So for Chris Carter, he knows how good Jeremiah Smith is. You could go on the Twitter and look at some tweets that Chris Carter has, and he'll say, oh, he's not really surprised. He knows what time it is. He knows this thing is about to actually fall. But that also goes to show how special this year is going to be or should be 
yeah, we're two games in, and I'm not making any big bull statements about what Ohio State will do down the road. Or I might, I'm, I'm not ready to alter things just yet. The defense has been amazing. The offense has been amazing. They both took steps forward in the right direction during game number two. Jeremiah Smith did as well, and the young man had one touchdown in game number two. That's okay. Three for the year. That's great. But Chris Carter realizes, yeah, he's hold, held that record for a very long time. I'm speaking for him right now. He also knew it was a good chance at some point the record was going to fall. In comes number four. When Will Howard is showing, not with his words, but what he's showing with his actions, that he has the utmost faith and belief in a true freshman in Jeremiah Smith, that is that just speaks volumes. Even what's outside of the record book, what's outside of the box score, that speaks volumes about the type of player and caliber of talent Jeremiah Smith is. When you add in Brian Hartline, when you add in Ryan Day and Chip Kelly's influence and impact on this young man's life and with him on the football field, that just is going to add to how great his career is going to be. And keep this in mind with number four. The Buckeyes got three years of them. Realistically, unless the NFL changes the rule, you have to stay in college for three years before going, or uh, be out of high school for three years before going to the NFL. I believe it's staying out of high school. I don't know if it's three years of playing college ball, but still, realistically, you got to play three years of ball, be in college for three years before going to the NFL. Okay. That is the rule. So you got Jeremiah Smith this year. Will Howard's gone after this year. You probably got Julian saying, sorry, Devin Brown, Julian saying starting and being QB1 next year. So you got those two things for him as well. You're going to have back-to-back years of Julian saying, this is me projecting who's going to be QB1 next year for Smith to catch a ball from. When you have that in mind, Jeremiah Smith at the, at the end of the day, now I'm not saying he's going to break uh, in Jigba's record of 1,600 receiving yards in a season, it's possible. I mean, the Buckeyes might play 16 or 17 games this year. It's realistically possible that re- that record might fall this year because a true freshman broke it. That's so true. What also is true is that records are meant to be broken and Chris Carter's will fall this year. I am comfortable making that statement right now because of how good Jeremiah Smith is is he conducts himself, when you look out there on the field, you don't look at out there and say, oh, he's a true freshman. No. You think he's a four- or five-year player. The way he runs his routes, the way he conducts himself, his mannerisms, he just is just that guy. I remember a couple years ago, well, actually more than a couple years ago, I was a volunteer coach um, under his former high school coach for a year, and David Bell, former Purdue great wide receiver, was a freshman at Warren Central High School. And Jeremy, my brother, had told me about David Bell. He had hyped up David Bell, said, hey, man, this cat is different. He had freshman starting varsity at Warren. Like, that's unheard of. Just like a freshman starting at Ohio State during every, any position. That's unheard of. So David Bell, I saw him, and I went out there. I got field access for a few games and realized David Bell's different. David Bell's not normal. He is doing things that most of the time freshmen don't do, and the opposition couldn't stop him. Same thing like Jeremiah Smith. What Jeremiah Smith does on the field, it ain't normal. He doesn't look like a true freshman, and the opposition can't stop him. Records are meant to be broken. Chris Carter's will be broken this year, and Jeremiah Smith has a good chance to just be all over the place and just put his name all over Ohio State's record book during his freshman year in Columbus. Speaking of something that's going to happen or should happen during Jeremiah Smith's freshman year in Columbus, it's what the Buckeyes must do during their off week because they view it as an improvement week. That's exactly what they should do. This episode is brought to you by Ultimate College Football HC. Hey, Locked on Buckeyes fans, I want to take a moment to give you a heads up on a brand new mobile game that I think you are going to love as much as I do. Ultimate College Football HC. In this amazing game and simulation, you get to step into the shoes of a head coach and lead your college football program to glory. From recruiting players and hiring coaching staff to overseeing training camps and handling school scholarships, you control every crucial detail of your program. It's all in your hands. Will you be able to handle the pressure? Here's what I really love about the game. You are responsible for calling offensive plays during the game. 
Your strategy will not only determine the success of your football season, but will shape the future and legacy of your program. Ultimate College Football HC is completely free, has no ads, and is 100% playable offline. And of course, we have a special offer for Locked On Buckeyes fans. Use the promo code Locked On CFB, all caps, inside the game store to receive a free boost to your program. Make sure to take advantage of this perk as it will get your team off to a strong start. To download the game, just visit Ultimate dash cfb.com or look it up on the app stores begin your coaching legacy today thank you for making locked on buckeyes your first listen every day the buckeyes are viewing this week as an improvement week yes it's an off week many of you are trying to figure out what you're going to do when the buckeyes are not playing this weekend you may be watching ball all weekend you may have a a list of projects around the home that you're going to do while the ball is on the background. Maybe you and your family are going to go out to enjoy the fall weather. Whatever it may be, you are finding something to do on Saturday. While Ohio State's not playing this weekend, that does not mean they're going to lessen the intensity in practice or not view this as what it should be, a time for the Buckeyes to get better. And they are calling it, not myself or anybody else, but those inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. The players are viewing this and calling this an improvement week. That's a championship mindset. That's the kind of mindset that Ohio State needs to have if they want to win the national championship, if they want to beat Michigan, if they want to win the conference for the first time since 2019, or excuse me, since 2020, they need to have this championship mindset that even though we're not playing a game this weekend, we're going to keep the intensity at an all-time high. We're going to make sure we improve. We're going to make sure we focus on the little details of the game. We're going to make sure we're doing all of that. And I think Ryan Day right now, as he's not calling plays and after the game, he looks exhausted. His voice is gone. Why is that? Because he's not having to focus on calling plays. He's literally coaching the entire time. And you know what you're coaching. If any of you have coached, your voice, which you're yelling a lot like that, your voice might be gone. Sometimes there is a sound. Um, there's a way that coaches speak. and Their voice is a little bit raspier because they've been doing it for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and just the repetitiveness of just the coaching aspect of them yelling over and over and over and over and over. They get a little raspy voice. Brian Hartline has a little bit of a raspy voice. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Sound like a football coach to me, and I like that sound. Speaking of that sound, those coaches must, must stay hard on these players absolutely no questions asked they must stay on top of them and i believe the coaches they're going to coach but it's different this year because there's a level of accountability that, that the players are going to have on each other they are going to be able to police themselves now i'm not saying that howard or maybe even cody simon are going to be like a peyton manning that i used to watch when i was a youngster that peyton manning could run the offensive practice every single day I don't think Howard is, has, a, has that in him right now. I don't think Cody Simon has it in him right now. They still need to be coached, which there's nothing wrong with that. But what is right with all of this? This season continues to feel different. Now it is early. I, I've said that I'm not ready to change some predictions that I have about this team as far as things that I have projected about what they'll do in December and January. I am not ready to do that just yet, but if the Buckeyes keep going every single week and improving and focusing on the little things, moving guys five, six, seven, ten yards down the down the field, if you're an offensive lineman, you get that guy at the line of scrimmage at deep tackle, or you get that guy at the second level, and you keep driving your feet, driving your feet, driving your feet, and what do you see? You're going to keep moving, going to keep moving, pancake. You're going to get those things to actually happen, and I can't. Wait to see what's coming next to this team. Now, we know the game time. We know some things are going on with that Marshall game. We're going to talk about that later on in the show. It's a big announcement that came out on Monday about things surrounding Ohio State's next game on the schedule. And I'm excited about it. Looking forward to it. Ohio State, if they keep this same energy as the kids say, or I say sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. If Ohio State keeps the same energy all 
season long, and they view every single week as a, as a time to improve and to work on maybe even the most minor detail that they have not able to, be, to, to fix all season long, if they keep that same energy, they're going to win the national championship. Because the caliber of talent on this team, it is rivaling the best of the best this year. Texas just went to the big house and just controlled the game all game long against Michigan. Alabama might not be the best team in the SEC. They're still better than I thought they'll be right now. Ole Miss, who I think is a top, I know a top 10 team, might be a top five team right now in the country. I don't think they can play with Ohio State. However, they are playing a decent ball right now. Georgia is Georgia. To me, they are the standard right now, and that's who Ohio State is chasing. That's who Ohio State's going after. And we all know how Ryan Day does in revenge games. If it ain't Michigan, he's done pretty well. He hadn't had a chance to go back at Alabama since that loss in the Natty in 2020. He hadn't had a chance to go back at Georgia since that loss in the playoff in the 2021 season. I had a chance to go back at either one of those two schools. Just imagine an Alabama-Ohio State matchup once again in the playoff this year before the home-and-home that Alabama and Ohio State have in, I believe, a couple years. Think maybe it's three, whatever the number is. Think about that, that actually happening. Ohio State has to go through Alabama, a team that Ryan Day and the Buckeyes just couldn't handle that. You know, granted, the COVID got in the way of Ohio State having their entire team ready to play and able to play. That's a reality. I still think Alabama would have won that game. But if Ryan Day gets the time to come back and do that thing against Alabama, great. If he has a chance to get a revenge on Georgia, that'll be a that'll be one of them games we'll be talking about for a very long time. And let's just say in the playoff, this is just me saying, speculating things that I think will happen or that the Ohio State will make a deep playoff run this year, that Ohio State and Texas, before they play next year in the season opener, they might meet this year in the natty. Former Buckeye quarterback, current Buckeye quarterback, uh, battling it out between Quentin Ewers and Will Howard. That will be a fun game to watch. Well, if you want to be able to potentially win all those games, if those matches actually happening, actually happen, you must work on the little details now, improve every single week. If you even weeks when you're not playing as times to improve because of the Buckeyes defense and the Buckeyes offense and the Buckeyes special teams continues to improve every single week, they will win the national championship. I have no problem saying that. I am not going to shy away from what I believe. If they continue to get better, if they continue to take every opportunity to focus on the minors and fix the things that need to be fixed, watch out for the teams that play Ohio State because they might not be ready for what's right in front of them. What is right in front of Ohio State is a big, massive broadcast company coming to Columbus when Ohio State and Marshall meet in a couple weeks. This episode is brought to you by 5-Hour Energy. Want to get in shape but having trouble staying motivated? Make 5-Hour Energy shots part of your lifestyle and get the energy boost you need to get fit. We all know you sometimes do not want to go to the gym. Take a 5-Hour Energy shot to give you the feeling and alertness so you can get to the gym. 5-Hour Energy is a brand hardworking people like yourself have trusted for over 20 years to give them the alert energized feeling they need to get through a busy hectic day you always know where to find five hour energy shots right at the cash register and nearly every convenience drug and grocery store nationwide if you go to five hour energy.com that is the number five hour energy.com and get some five hour energy product today you can use my promo code locked on cfb to receive 20 percent off your order this offer is only valid until September 30th on one order and cannot be used with other promotions. The code is not good on subscription orders. Go to 5hourenergy.com today. Thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen every day. The wait is over. Big noon is coming to Columbus. Fox is broadcasting Ohio State's next game. It's a 12 noon kickoff on Big Fox. Big Noon Kickoff, the pregame show, Big Noon Saturday, 
We got the whole spotlight. Ohio State for about five hours will be highlighted as it should be. This is one of those times I normally am a guy <laughs> that likes primetime games, sometimes middle, middle after of the afternoon games. I'm glad this game is at noon. I am so glad we don't have to wait till 3.30. I am so glad we ain't got to watch a blowout in primetime. We get it. Start today. The Buckeyes get that game over. Hop over to, to the postcast with us live on the YouTube at Locked on Buckeyes at the conclusion of that game and get that all the Buckeye fix we need to start the day and then continue watching college football the rest of the weekend. Big noon coming to Columbus is huge. When Fox first started their big noon kind of let's dominate this 12 noon window, I'm thinking, okay, I understand why. I understand the TV aspect of it. I did not even think that the Big Ten may have been talking to NBC and CBS at the time or after Fox kind of started the big noon thing to say, oh, CBS has a contract that's going to be up with the SEC. NBC wants to get in on college football. The Big Ten could literally have big games at 12, 3.30, and 7.30, and then even in um, Big Ten after dark, no longer Pac-12 after dark, with UCLA, USC, Oregon, and Washington kind of dominating that late, late 11 o'clock Eastern kickoff time. I'm glad that the Big Ten has found a way to dominate, have a big-time game, a big-time program, play every in every single wing, window. I'm still not the biggest th- fan of uh, the Michigan-Ohio State game being at 12 noon. That's not a Fox thing. That is between the schools. I'm not a big fan of Ohio State-Penn State not being in prime time. That, to me, is still annoying. Very, very annoying. Ohio State, when it's at Ohio Stadium, they get a blackout. We got them all black jerseys. They all know we love them. We, I got one in my closet, and it goes to Penn State. Make it the wide out. I don't care if Penn State wears their home jerseys or their all whites on the away side. I don't know. I don't care. You go to the wide out of Ohio State, they can wear all white. I mean, they've done it before. I believe they won that game when they did, did that about six or seven years ago under Urban Meyer's watch. Not really sure, but what I do know is – I am glad Big Noon is coming. And my gut says Big Noon is going to come probably three times, at least three. Um, Another time, the next time probably will be homecoming against Nebraska. Honestly, it could be Iowa. That one, because I think Iowa and Ohio State may be more of a CBS 330 feel or NBC in primetime feel. Not saying that Fox doesn't want that game. I had not looked at the schedule to compare all the Big Ten games that day. But something tells me that that Iowa Ohio State game's at three thirty. I don't believe that kickoff time has been set yet. I could be mistaken. Let me look at that really quickly. It has not been set yet. So that game to me has more of a three thirty a primetime feel, just because I think that would not be Fox's first pick. That's not saying they don't want Ohio State. Michigan plays numerous West Coast schools. And something tells me that that might be where they lean just because of the TV draft and things like that. You pick a week, not a game. That's kind of the conversation that happens. I don't know who, what is drafted at each time to say, oh, in the TV draft to figure out who is playing what. Does Ohio, like, does Fox want this week or CBS or NBC? And they go back and forth and back and forth in drafting. I'm still leaning that Ohio State and I was more of a 3.30 on CBS, and I would really enjoy Brad Nessler calling that game. But I think Ohio State and Big Noon is going to be the Nebraska game. I think it'll be the, of course, the Michigan game, of course, the Marshall game. And it's probably a fourth. I'm not sure what the fourth game would be, but there's probably a fourth. Um, the Oregon game's already in prime time. I don't think Big Noon would do the college game day thing where they would go to one place and then have their – um, ha- not have that not be the game they're calling that day with their number one broadcast team. I just don't see that happening. Even though Oregon, Ohio State is on the same day as one of the biggest days of the year, which Red River is that same day. So there's a lot of big stuff going on in college football that day. Um, but I think Marshall, Nebraska, Michigan, and possibly a fourth. I'm just not exactly sure what the fourth game would be that Big New to come to Columbus. Fox wants to eat up all the Ohio State coverage they can, and they're going to start doing that in a couple weeks when the Buckeyes return to the field to face off with Marshall. Thank you for making Locked On Buckeyes your first listen of the day. Now go check out the Locked On College football podcast from NIL deals to never-ending conference realignment rumors. Spencer McLaughlin gets you ready for an exciting season on the gridiron. You can find the link to Locked On College football in the description so you don't need to search part of 
the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Buckeye fans, we're out of here on a Tuesday. You can follow me on Twitter at jstephen07. We'll see you next time.